Hello, and welcome back to Don't Just Sit There, Do Something. I'm your host, Joylette Portlock, and in today's episode, we're gonna go through five of the most popular reasons people give for being unwilling to accept the scientific evidence about climate change. Without further ado, reason number one. What about the El Nino, man? Weather and climate are related, as we talked about a few episodes ago, but you need to look at the long-term trend. The Pacific Ocean is warm during an El Nino year, which makes for warmer weather, and the Pacific is cool during a La Nina year, so El Nino or La Nina weather events might make things seem temporarily better or worse. But the long-term climate trend since 1880 shows that worldwide temperatures are going up, way up. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, 2011 was the warmest La Nina year ever recorded, and there's every reason to expect the next El Nino year will shatter the high temperature records. Another common thing people want to believe is that these warmer temperatures are all part of a normal natural cycle. Yes, ice ages happen, and then the Earth warms and cools and warms again. That happens because of small variations in our orbit around the sun and the planet's tilt on its axis. Climate scientists everywhere haven't forgotten about the natural cycles involved. The higher and higher temperatures we're seeing can't be explained by the normal cycles alone. The most likely explanation, by far, is the billions of tons of heat trapping greenhouse gas pollution we're pouring into the air every year when we burn oil, coal, and natural gas for transportation and power. And because greenhouse gas pollution stays up there for a while, what we do right now decides what happens for the next hundred years or so. But humans are adaptable anyway, right? I mean, we'll just adapt. I hate being cold anyway. The changes we're causing are coming too suddenly for us to adapt well. There's not enough time for humans to adapt our way out of needing water in a drought. Well, I guess that's kind of good. I mean, I would look terrible with like a camel hump or something. Moving on to reason number four, that some scientists somehow are secretly making money off of perpetuating the myth of global warming. Do you wanna see my last paycheck? Based on a 2009 study by the Pew Research Center, scientists received most of their funding from the government, nonprofits or foundations, and industry in that order. There's no evidence that any of these institutions is some kind of cash cow for the climate scientists. So let me get this straight. Scientists are making more money by saying climate change is real than the fossil fuel industry is making by saying climate change is a hoax. Huh. Because, yeah, I, I would have thought it was the other way around. There's an illusion out there that the scientific community is divided on this. It's not. In March of 2010, a review of expert opinions showed that 97 to 98% of climate researchers agree that climate change is real and that our burning fossil fuels is the cause. The scientific societies agreeing with that statement include 32 national science academies around the world, including our own National Academy of Sciences, the National Research Council, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Chemical Society, the American Institute of Physics. 97%. Because that's like if you had a toilet overflowing in your house and you invited a hundred plumbers to give you recommendations for fixing it and 97 of them gave you some kind of reasonable response and, but you went with the three that didn't even go in the bathroom and then started to tell you your house had no toilet. The only professional society that still seems to be officially disagreeing that global climate change is happening and is man-made is the American Association of Petroleum Geologists. The other thing the experts agree on is that we need to do something about our greenhouse gas pollution and do it now. So I hope that you are charged up and ready to take the episode's two actions. The first one is easy. Just have a conversation with someone about climate change. Anyone, uh, a friend, a parent, that sweet old lady behind you in line at the grocery store who seems like she just wants to talk to someone about anything. You know, show someone this video. You can let us know how it goes in the comments. Secondly, a larger action that will make a big difference. The Environmental Protection Agency has just proposed the first ever greenhouse gas pollution limits for new power plants. Power generation is our biggest source of greenhouse gas pollution, and these new limits will make a big impact. EPA is now accepting public comments about the new limits and wants to hear from you. So follow the link in the video description below and use the simple web form to voice your opinion about these important, achievable new limits. Talk to someone, anyone, about climate change and let the EPA know what you think about the new pollution limits for new power plants. In other words, don't just sit there.
Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Do something. And that about wraps up our episode. Wait, I, I just wanted to say the sun is not getting hotter. Yeah, um, radiation from the sun was increasing until around 1980, but since then solar output has actually gone down. So yeah, it's, it's not the sun getting hotter. Sorry, I just get that one a lot. And that wraps up our episode. Tune in next time to hear the latest and learn something about climate. As summer heats up, we'll be talking about the ways that greenhouse gas pollution is affecting our air quality, and as always, what you can do to help. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Google+, or on the web at do somethingaboutclimate.com. So, watch again.